Meet Jason Cooper, a 36-year-old spendaholic from Bristol, whose finances are a real-life horror show. Some people binge on food, you know, some people, you know, binge on drink. I binge on spending. When it comes to money, Jason lives in a fantasy world. A part-time student, he works three days a week in a record store and earns just £550 a month. But his debts are a massive 35 grand. I like spending money on films, all Asian and horror films, on comics for the zombie geeks. It's, it, it really is a must-have. And I like spending money on clothes. Jeans from Japan, very nice, very expensive. When payday comes, it will be a case of, OK, well, which ones do I want, or should I just have all of them? And feeding his addiction leaves no money for his family. It would be nice to share the family finances more. Sometimes it does feel like a huge burden. It's time to bring this modern-day Peter Pan back down to earth. Lifestyle expert Jay Hunt will help him take control of his finances and realise his potential. All I'm saying is that you do have skills which you are incredibly good with that you're not utilising. Psychological coach Benjamin Fry will target the anxieties behind his compulsive spending. Shall we screw our carriage to the sticking place on London Bridge and face shame? No! <laughs> Can Jason swap his world of financial make-believe for one of financial responsibility? And I've got to put my hands up and say that I'm immature, that I don't have a handle on this. But I'm 36 years old and I think it's going to be extremely difficult for me to change. Jason is a student in film studies who dreams of becoming a horror film director. He also works in a record store earning £550 a month. It's dangerous territory for a man obsessed with cult films. Just those, please, fella. It's very lethal. If I see a, a film that I want, then it's really difficult for me to not buy it. Jason admits he lives the life of a carefree bachelor despite sharing it with his partner Jane and their eight-year-old son, Ethan. It is a real struggle to let that kind of self-identity go. It's reached the point where his spending is a love affair with each and every purchase. Beautiful distressed pair of trousers. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. While he splurges the cash with abandon, it's left to Jane, who works as an actress, to foot the bill. I think one of the main impacts of Jason's spending would be the stress of worrying, are we going to have enough money for the following month? I have to spend it. I just have to get rid of it. I can't, for some reason, I just don't like having money on me. I don't know what, what that's about. The reason I want to change is, is definitely because of my family. You know, I, I think that my spending and my day-to-day -day living gets in the way of my relationship with my, with my son and with my partner. You want to go right, take the next on the right. You reckon? Yeah. It's time for our financial crusaders, Benjamin and Jay, to get to the bottom of Jason's compulsion. With his flat empty for the day, they're keen to see just how bad his situation is. I'm very, very worried about your map, really. Yeah, no, here we are on the left. Park up. This is it. Benjamin will look for the psychological clues behind his consumer cravings, while Jay's on the hunt for evidence of how much he spends on his addiction. As soon as you walk into my flat, it's obvious where some of my spending lies. A blind person could easily see what I spend my money on. Here we go. Uh, um, oh, how weird. It's not very normal in your entrance hall. Not what you expect at all. No. But if they thought that was strange, they ain't seen nothing yet. Yeah, look, they've all got their prices on. I mean, look at that. £14, £15, £15.50, £11, 20 quid! Yeah. 
Jason's comic collection runs into the thousands. And then there are his DVDs. Look, it just goes on and on and on. Mm. Look at these ones. This is like a full collection of gore films. Martial arts, gore, horror. There's hundreds of these videos. It's really boisey. There's nothing mm. sort of really feminine in here. And the boisey theme continues. Next up, the bedroom. That's not a cheap habit. Look mm. at all of that. Where's his wife? Well, there's Have absolutely... Have you ever been into a, a bedroom of a couple and seen mm. so many male shoes? This designer collection adds up to just over £2,000. I mean, look at all of these. These Maharishis come yeah. with different patterns on the legs, and the more detail, the more you're paying for them. But, you know, Maharishi trousers like that range from about 120 up to 500 quid, depending wow. on how much detail is on them. But, you see, this is more. More of his stuff, his stuff. So you're saying, where is she? The answer is sandwiched in at this end with that much space. I would say this guy mm. is supremely selfish. I never thought I'd say it, but I do feel myself coming over a bit old-fashioned. Ah, oh, you see, it's happened. Yeah. Jay and Benjamin have seen enough. But before they leave, there's the small matter of Jason's financial records. Oh, look. Repayment letters acceptance. We're prepared to accept settlement of the above debt of three and a half thousand mm -hmm. by monthly instalments of two pounds. Well, whoopee. <laughs> What's he spending on? Virgin, 56 pounds. Waterstones, 51. Virgin, 46. Blockbuster, 25. Forbidden mm. Planet, 29. Let's take the bank statements and oh, go off. Let's get out of here. Seen enough. It's time to take super spender Jason to task, and our credit crusaders have a superhero shock tactic to knock him into financial good sense. Jay. Nice to meet you, Jay. Now, I know it seems a bit weird, but I'm just going to put this blindfold on you. Is that OK? And walk you round, because we've got something to show you. OK. Yeah, Do you trust cool. us? So you haven't hardly met us, and now we're going to... Feels like it's a Saturday night. <laughs> Come with me. We'll guide you in. You can take your blindfold off now and you can meet your new friends. <laughs> Recognise oh them? God, that's such a bad haircut. <laughs> <laughs> so what we've got here is 35 Jason superheroes, and each of them <laughs> has a total on their chest, £500, OK? So 35 of them, all representing £500, comes to seventeen and a half thousand pounds and that is the amount of money that you've spent in the last three years on trainers, clothes, DVDs. Did you know it was that much? Uh, no. No. Do you keep any kind of tally of how much you spend on that or not really? No, not at all. No. I so... just ostrich. Do you think that it's a shock to see how much money you've spent? Uh, yeah, no, yeah it is. I would have said about five or six. Would you? 000. Five or six? Yeah. yeah. Only slightly wrong. Yeah. Not <laughs> about ten then. grand out. Marvellous. That's not much. No. Well, look, you're a visual person, so this is an image that you should try and retain to help you on your, those it's dangerous moments as you pass the comic shop. <laughs> well, we've got something that we'd like you to go and find in among the maze of Jason's. Oh, my God. And we're going to go upstairs and watch while you go and look for a little bit of something. A little bit of something. Somewhere in the field of Super Jasons, Benjamin and Jay have planted some long-forgotten sidekicks. <laughs> he looks great. Yeah, it's lovely, isn't it? Can I keep this one? <laughs> uh, back up a bit, please. It's not the only thing in your life, is it? Very nice as well. So who are they? Uh, my family. Do you think there's any conflict between the 35 Jason superheroes in this room and those two rather lovely people whose cardboard cutouts you're dearly clinging on to? Yeah, there is. Is there just a little bit too much Jason in this room? Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And what does that remind you of? Uh, my flat. Mm. Our flat. Which we went to, of course, this morning, and were very hard-pressed, really, to find any evidence of Jane or Ethan in there. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. I've been aware for quite a while that um, I hide behind a lot of things to keep me, to keep me separate from my family. Right. So, um, and I would like that to change. When I saw the cutout of my son, it really freaked me out because it was the realisation that actually it isn't about the money that I'm spending, it's kind of about, you know, the stuff behind all of that stuff and the stuff behind all of my spending is actually my relationship with my son and the relationship with my partner. Jason's binge spending habits have landed him and his family in financial hot water. His first step to rehabilitation will be learning how to survive in the real world. But before Benjamin and Jay assign him his new weekly budget, they need the bare facts. Can I just ask you what you think you spend in an average week? Um, I don't know. What yeah. does it feel like you spend? Well, some weeks, nothing. Mm. Right. You know, because I, mean, I, yeah. I don't have money constantly, so it's, you know, when I have it, you know, it's kind of like a, on a, a binge thing. So how much do you actually spend on a binge? The last time I had a student check, and that was about... I can't remember, 3,000 maybe, and that kind of went in the weekend. You spent three grand Pretty in much. the weekend. But, but some of that was set aside for, you know, for bills, one or two bills. So. Well, we've had a look through your spending patterns, and the average amount that you spend in an average week is £121.50p. Right. But that's not all you spend, because you also take money off your partner Jane and on average that's another hundred quid a week. So that is £221 you get through on a week when you are saying I don't spend anything in those weeks. That's quite a lot, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I actually have an interesting fact for you. That the average family in Britain is supported by the breadwinner providing £220 a week. Okay. So that amount of money on the table is actually enough to take care of your family, assuming you can live like an average family. OK. Normally, the cold turkey budget would be the minimum amount someone could survive on for seven days. But in Jason's case, there's his family to consider. We're going to take back this money, and what we're going to leave you with is £120, OK? Now, that £120 is the money that we would like you to take and be in charge of your whole family budget for the week. So do you think that's feasible? This is going to be a nightmare. You don't it's... really want to let go of certain... <laughs> no, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I'm going to need it. Back home, he breaks the news to an anxious Jane. The bad news is, for the next week, I'm in charge of the money. Ooh. <laughs> That's a frightening prospect. <laughs> I have £120. Right. OK, to pay for everything for the next seven days. Right. Well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> OK. Um, it's frightening thinking of, you know, handing over control to you, but um, I think it's going to be kind of um, a huge pressure off me as well. After years of managing the family finances, Jane's putting her trust in him. It's not going to be easy uh, for him, um, but I'm sure... I'm put, I've got faith in him. I think he'll manage OK. I'm not too scared. <laughs> put it that way, I'm not too scared. <laughs> the same can't be said for Jason. To physically hold this money for a week and kind of do this on a day-to-day -day basis, I think it's going to be difficult for me. In fact, what I wanted to do tonight, as soon as I got back, was to say, OK, well, here's the money for the petrol and there's the money for, for this, and so to get it all sorted over and done with there and then. It's day one of cold turkey. In his new role as Chancellor of the Family Exchequer, Jason's first task is restocking the fridge. £21. Pounds. He's one day into the job, and already he's spent half his budget for the entire week. I've given Jane £5 a day to pay for the, the bridge toll. Uh, in two shops, £21.50, and in the other, £5.21, both on food. And then £1.99 on a card. 
that came to 33.70. I've also minus 20 pound that I need to pay for my travel to uni. So that comes to 53.70, which leaves 66 pound and 30 pence for six days. That's 10 pound a day. Ooh. I have no idea how that money is gonna last for six days. Don't know. His grasp of the purse strings might not be too keen, but his appreciation of what's really involved is growing. My hat is off to Jane, <laughs> having to kind of work this out. It takes some engineering, I have to say. You know, I've done it for a day and I've got a headache. The next morning, he's determined to rein in some of his everyday excesses. He's off to work, but instead of spending £10 on lunch and coffees, he makes his own. He also saves £3.50 by avoiding the bus and cycling there instead. Day two draws to a close. Jason might have only saved £13.50, but he's discovering that the time and effort invested is paying back emotional dividends. I'm taking more of an active role in the house, in the home, which has kind of been missing for a while. So far, cold turkey is ringing the changes with Jason. But if it's to have a lasting impact, he needs to get to the root cause of his consumer compulsion. Benjamin calls him to London for a meeting. He's keen to explore Jason's anxiety around money. Well, my, my earliest memory of kind of money in the family was, I mean, my mum worked a couple of jobs, my dad worked a couple of jobs, but we never really had any money, although they worked really hard. I mean, I've got an identical twin brother and I've got a sister and there was no money. But I was very conscious of what I didn't have as opposed to what I did have, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Other people have more. Yeah, or other people have better. It's really difficult for me to not compare myself. And, and that's just what happens every time I meet someone. Well, you mentioned you're a twin, an identical twin. Yeah. Is that complicated with feelings of jealousy? Since kind of birth, really, I've had this person that I've been compared to. So that kind of competing thing has kind of always been there. Often. Twins retain a kind of weird connection that seems almost even more of a bond than normal siblings. Yeah. You didn't have that. No. <laughs> That's definitely not been our experience. You know, whenever we were naughty, my mum used to um, pretend to phone this woman up to come and take us away. One of you or both of you? Me or him or both. Well, that's reasonably exciting competition, isn't it? To see who's going to be the twin to be got rid of. Yeah. But when I started crying, she kind of said, oh, OK, well, I'll phone them back. It's almost like the one who's most self-sufficient is the one she would have got rid of. That's really interesting. As a child, Jason believed that when he cried, he won his mother's sympathy over his twin brother. Now Benjamin thinks he's carried this pattern of vulnerability into his adult relationships. And maybe there's some of that going on with your partner. Maybe you worry that if you became more successful and more financially competent, actually, she might move on because you wouldn't need her. Oh, I see, I don't like that. I don't like the idea of that. It's almost like money in the hand is a death. Mm. Make yourself unlovable, almost, by being successful. Yeah, that's screwed, isn't it? That's screwed up thinking. Maybe the real phobia about being successful is that you won't be allowed to stay in the family. Yeah. That'd be well worth sabotaging your money over, wouldn't it? Hmm. It would. It's clear the session with Benjamin has brought a lot to the surface. When I'd mentioned the, um, the incident with my mum with Benjamin about you know, phoning this woman up to take us away. Um, it was a memory, it, I hadn't spoke about it for ages and I hadn't thought about it for years. So, um, so it kind of, it did take me aback, I have to say. It was kind of like, oh my God. 
The next morning, it's back to the present and Jason's final day of cold turkey. He's off to university, but after paying for a second family food shop and Jane's travel, he's left with just five pounds for the day. For the first time since starting his film studies course, he ventures into the library. One of the books that I need for reading is just over 60 pounds. So I can't really afford to buy the book this week. So um, I'm here to one pick up that book and also have a look to see what other books they have. And I have to say, it's a very impressive library. For the man who buys everything brand new, it's been a revelation. And that's not all. He's come in on budget for the week and kept the family finances in check all by himself. There were several times in the week that I've kind of wanted to say to Jane, oh, Jane, can I borrow a tenner? And of course, obviously, I couldn't ask her for money because I had the responsibility that week. So I stopped myself several times, really. So I feel really confident in, in so much as, OK, well, I know how I can start implementing these changes. Jason's cold turkey performance bodes well, but with a part-time wage of just £550 a month, he needs to make serious cutbacks if he's going to tackle his gargantuan debt of 35 grand. To help Jason take control of his finances, Jay has devised a new long-term budget. But first, she's keen to hear his feedback on the past week. So, having this week and doing it has been an unusual thing for you, to suddenly not only have to have responsibility for money for yourself, but for two other people as well. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. The responsibility of that is what I didn't like. Mm. So, you know, having to be responsible, I don't want to be. <laughs> But it definitely feels like the right time. Until I see a very routine that I want. So what we've got to think about is doing it in stages. It's like we've done stage one, which was cold turkey. You've got through that. So stage two is looking at Jason's new budget. OK. OK, so what we've done, Jason, is we've worked out at the moment how much you've been spending every month, OK? So all the housing bills, rent, telephone, council tax bills, Ethan stuff, food, that has all been zero. And where your money has actually been going is in this column here, which is on your course, on DVDs, on comics, on books and on clothes. And when we add it all up, what it comes to every month is £839 a month. OK. Now, that is £289 more than the £550 that you bring in, which is really the money that you're constantly claiming back from Jane. That's not nice. I didn't realise it would be that much. Didn't you? No, I didn't. I don't feel too good seeing that. Jay has shown no mercy in her new budget. In fact, the only payment that's unchanged is his college fees. DVDs that you're spending £130 a month on, we've knocked down to 25 Comics at the moment, you've been spending £53 a month We've got that in, which is going to be quite hard for you at zero. Books, £53. We've halved that. And then clothes, which you've been spending £250 a month on, is the other thing that we're massively cutting back on. We've got that in at zero. That's painful. Is it? <laughs> yeah. The idea of not being able to buy yeah. clothes is a bit mm. harsh. And the reason that we've been, you know, let's be honest, quite brutal and put that in at zero is because we don't really think that you need any more. Can you just make do with your two wardrobes full of stuff for a bit while we make some inroads into these debts? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Lastly, his enormous debt of £35,000, which partner Jane currently pays off. Jay's upped his contributions from nothing to £100. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be easy. Mm. No, that's cool. I, I totally understand. I do understand, and I think it's the right thing to do. Whether it's going to feel good at the end of the month, you know, at the end of each month, um, is a different matter, but, I, but it is the right thing to do. With Jay tackling the future, Benjamin turns his attention to the present. As a child, Jason always felt compared to his identical twin brother, Aaron. Now, Benjamin wants to see how this manifests itself in his adult life by constantly comparing himself to others. To explore this further, he's invited Jason to a very subjective slideshow. 
What I want you to do really is just talk me through your immediate reactions to the photographs and where it leaves you feeling in terms of this internal constant evaluation of where you are on the pecking order. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, here's the first picture. Oh, that's just a chav, isn't it? That's just, yeah. Dismissive. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't have any time for, 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 you know. I know I'm a snob, it's just like, it's just so horrible. So your immediate reaction is, that is less than me. I am superior. It just sounds so awful, no, but yes. It's fine, that's what we're here to discover. Yeah. Want to move on? Okay. All right. Yeah, all, right. he, all his mates probably wear the same label. One of a, one of a thousand catalogue people. That would be my immediate judgment. The immediate reaction is not the man, it's not the face, but it's the clothes. Yeah. And that's interesting. It's just pompous. Suited and booted. Pompous and arrogant. So you're not threatened by him either? Um, well, actually, my reaction to him is probably that I would feel threatened by him, by mm -hmm. that type of person. But, but, my, but my reaction is that, he's, you know, I would put him down. So the obvious trappings of success might make you feel a sense of inferiority? Yeah. And you respond to that by finding a way to criticise him? Yeah. There's one last comparison for Jason to make. Cool dudes. His brother. Oh, I see, I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> Superior, inferior. I don't know what to say with that one. I think you're haunted by the possibility of being inferior, but also frightened of the guilt of being superior. Yeah, that would fit. And in this picture, you could go either way. I'd probably go both. Exactly. Yeah. You go both because you don't really want to win and you don't really want to lose. Do you know, I remember doing, um, we were doing a race, I think it was at the 800 metres, and there was a, one kid that was coming first, and it was a race between my brother and myself who was going to come second and third. Mm -hmm. And it was in the last 100 metres, and I gave up. You gave up? I gave up running, stopped running, and then my brother win. It feels easier to give up, doesn't it? Yeah. And yet you know what you could do better. Yeah. Well, we're going to do some more work on that, and um, I think we'll just turn up the temperature a notch or two. Benjamin's hit upon Jason's central dilemma. He wants to be successful, but allows himself to fail. It's the following morning, and Benjamin's brought him to the epicentre of London's financial district. So how do you feel in this environment, in this context? Um, I, I feel really inadequate here. Inadequate? Yeah. Superior? Inferior? Inferior. Inferior. Do you think they think you're a winner or a loser? Probably a loser. How do you feel, though, about yourself, truly, in this environment? Do you feel like a winner or a loser? Um, here, a loser. Yeah. This is sad. In order for Jason to confront his feelings of inadequacy, Benjamin wants him to exclaim his shame loud and proud. What I have here is a placard for you to hold up. Oh. I'd like you to reveal it. No, <laughs> I don't, I can't. Reveal it. I don't want to. Please. <laughs> it's for all of us. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come here. Can you just no, hold no, that? No, you, it's OK, you <laughs> hold it. <laughs> <laughs> but Jason's not keen on Benjamin's very public form of confession. So how does this make you feel? Oh, is it important? This, this is awful. Oh. I'm physically shaking. Yeah. I, I don't like this at all. Is that because you don't want people to know this is how you feel? Yeah, no, absolutely. OK. Yeah. This is so bad. <laughs> After 10 minutes of public therapy, Benjamin comes to the rescue. You feel just in shock because yeah. you're revealing yourself to the world in yeah. a way that you spent so much time and energy trying to cover up. Let's yeah. face it, all those outfits, all those clothes, all those individuals, everything you do is about trying to hide 
a lurking sense of inadequacy, isn't it? So much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's about keeping that sign under wraps. OK. I've got a new sign here. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, initial reactions. Um, How does that feel? Um, God, my heart is just, my heart is racing. It's not easy either, this is it? No, this isn't easy either. No, this is, this is just as bad, really. Just as bad. Say yeah. that again. This is just as bad. Why does it feel so difficult to hold up a sign saying winner? Because it just doesn't feel right. It doesn't feel... You don't feel because like Because I don't winner. feel like a winner, yeah. It's becoming clear that Jason's internal battle between success and failure is what's stopping him from moving forward in his life. The worrying thing I think comes out of today is that there is something about the way he grew up that made it important for him not to fulfill his potential in order to feel safe. Now, if Jason is stuck with that feeling at the core of his sense of self, it's going to be very, very difficult for him to grow up, become an adult, manage money and hang on to it. And unfortunately, Benjamin's concerns are ringing true. After years of suppressing his feelings, Jason's struggling to come to terms with the issues that have risen to the surface. I've just spent the last three days in bed. Uh, this process brings up a lot of, um, a lot of feelings and um, a lot of stresses and a lot of anxieties. It kind of has really brought up the fact that maybe I have been selling myself short for a while and kind of taken the easy option. Um, and I think that I've kind of, I've known that as well, which is why I think I've just crashed. I've just been in a, a, a place of not knowing what I want to do, where I want to go, who I am, what I'm about. This has been quite uh, an emotional roller coaster, really, and I know that I just need to keep facing my fear and doing it. Concerned that Jason may have hit an emotional brick wall, Benjamin calls a crisis meeting with Jay. Because of the way that he feels his parents always compared him to his identical twin brother, there is something so pathological about the way that he compares himself mm -hmm. constantly to everyone he meets or is around or knows. It's interesting you say that because one of his really big areas of spending is clothes and they're almost like a sort of comedy shield. It's like when people first meet him, they see the clothes and not him. So I think I'm going to really have to crack this mm -hmm. and hopefully get him more into portraying himself as being confident and feeling less need for these clothes the whole time. Well, that does, you know, it mirrors what I'd like from him in a sense. So if you can begin to make some progress on the surface, then maybe I can use that as a way into helping him make some progress deeper down. With Jason's self-belief at rock bottom, Jay decides to take him shopping. But with his clothes budget slashed to zero, this is shopping for confidence. Come with me. This is Judy Jones. Hello. This is Jason. Hi, nice Hello, to meet Jason. You. Pleased Hi. to meet you. Hi. Now, Judy is a body language expert. OK? OK. And what <laughs> we're going to do is do some exercises and some work with Judy today, because what I want to explore with you is how much the whole clothes thing with you is part of your identity and how much it's slightly taken over. Jason's obsession with being unique means he only buys designer labels and never shops in high street stores. Jay thinks he uses this as a defence and wants Judy to teach him how to feel confident in whatever he wears. That body language is saying he's not happy yeah, to me. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm worried because your facial expression was pure disgust and you're using this pleading gesture with your hands. So it's obviously worked. Let's go for a pair of jeans, white T-shirt, grey top. Enjoy. Yeah. Enjoy, yeah, right. Don't run away. Once changed, a new Jason emerges and the difference in his body language is all too clear. Excellent body language. <laughs> Look at you. I was going to say, this how do you how do you feel? This is horrible. This what is, I want you to is... notice are the, all this stuff. Can you see all, all of this self comfort stuff has become almost a ritual? And your little arms have gone out here, and your feet are what we call tentative at the moment. They're like poised to run away somewhere along the line. So I think they're trying to get out those shoes and run out the door. Yeah. So what I would like you to do is to get your feet about shoulder width apart. 
That looks better already. I just want a little bit push forward there. That's better. Now, I want your energy to come from here. I want you to actually portray that strength again. So I don't want you to bring the chest up. I want you to stretch it outwards. You look like a superhero already. That is a big difference. <laughs> right. All I want Very you to good. do is, in that outfit, but with the new Jason body language, I want you to walk confidently up to Jay, and I'm just going to ask you, as though you don't know her, I'm going to ask you to shake hands with her and just introduce yourself. Off you go. Hiya, I'm Jason. Hello, Jason. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Fine. You look great in that outfit. Yeah, thanks. I thought I'd try. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> looking good yourself. Do you know, this has got so good, you've even gone into the thumb oh. flirting mode. Oh. Hands oh. <laughs> <laughs> Without being I... told. <laughs> Drawing attention to the pelvis. He's on the advanced class. Okay. Yeah, okay. What I think would really help free you up and help you with your budget is if you got an interview or something really important or there was some big night out, you could think, you know what, fine, I'm going to go like this. I haven't got to go out and spend a huge amount of money on something that's going to give me the confidence for that event. Yeah, I'll go with that. So I've been thinking about whether I would be more comfortable with people seeing the real me as opposed to um, the clothes that I wear or the trainers that I wear or this this kind of image that I project. Um, and I have to say, I think I would be more comfortable. Well, I've kind of started anyway, so. Spurred on by the realization he uses his clothes to hide behind, Jason takes radical action. With Jane's help, they begin to tackle the imbalance in wardrobe space. You've got to be gentle with clothes. There's so many. <laughs> Jason's taken positive steps to free himself from his material possessions. Benjamin decides it's time to explore the root cause of his problems. He wants to appeal to the film director within and has devised a psychodrama with Jason and his family playing the lead roles. Jane, very nice to meet you finally. I've heard all about you. He's prepared two picnics. Jane and Ethan's is set in the modern day, while Jason is going back in time to the 70s. That's your chair there. OK, yeah. Um, so, I really want you to try to imagine that these figures represent your mother and your brother. And I thought today we'd work on that memory, the one that you explained to me about being in your mother's bedroom and believing that she'd phoned someone to take you away and how you resolved that and how you actually got her to keep you. And I know that was a very difficult memory to bring up. And I thought maybe we should try to help you move on from that memory a bit and, in a sense, kind of ask them what their perspective on it is. I, just, I can't, I, you know, this is just, it's just, I just find this really weird. If you can't do it, that's OK. No, I, I like it, you know, it's, it's a challenge, it's cool. OK, Mum, I found it really quite frightening when you would pretend to phone up that woman to come and take one of us away. And tell her how you remember her changing her mind, what made her change her mind. I think I remember it being after, you know, I'd started crying, saying I didn't want to go, and you pretended to phone the woman back. Hmm. There's a genuine sense that when the actual event occurred of your mother saying, I am arranged for you to be taken away, it was your tears and your vulnerability that reversed that. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Having expressed his emotions, Benjamin wants to show him how this memory relates to his relationships in the present day. Are you feeling in the present echoes of the past? Well, yeah, I mean, I do find this uncomfortable. I do find the kind of family stuff outside of the house really uncomfortable, and I don't know what that is. What's the scary thing? I don't know. I don't know. There might be one or two things that I would want to say. Yeah but more than likely not in front of my son. OK. Do you think that you are bringing stuff to this family table yeah. that belongs at that family table? Yeah, no, absolutely. Table? Yeah, absolutely. OK. Yeah. Where should it be? It should be the other side of the tree. Should we go back and put it there? Yeah. 
Come on, then. <laughs> Carry on. Unable to express his true feelings in front of Ethan, Benjamin wants Jason to take them back in time and leave them there. Can you feel any similar feelings from there to here? This is just so mad, and it's kind of like, it's, you know, it's really horrible to say, but I do compete with my son. Yeah. I do compete, and I don't, I don't want to. What do you compete with him for? I don't know, attention. I don't know, yeah. Attention from? Oh, God damn it. Jane. Yeah. Come on, get it out there. Yeah. You do feel when you go over there that you recognise a dynamic of competing with Ethan for Jane's attention mm. and love. Yeah. And acceptance. Yeah. And approval. Mm. Now, what does that remind you of right here? Well, it's a, it's a mirror. Yeah. Competing with Aaron, which actually is about being allowed to stay in your home. Mm. Do you want to give this problem back to them? I do want to give them... I, I, yeah, I do want it. I, yeah, I don't want it anymore. OK. Absolutely. It's time for Jason to move on and gain a clearer perspective on his situation. Now, what I'd like you to do is have a look at the view now. Whatever's going on over there, you're now outside observing. And I think you feel more relaxed there. Well, I was going to say unburdened. Unburdened? Is, but I was just trying to think of a different word to use, but... I love that word. Yeah. That's what we're doing here today. Yeah. We're trying to unburden you. Now, what I worry about is that we're getting further away from the past and from those difficult feelings, but in doing so, you got further away from your family, didn't you? Mm. Yeah. I worry that, actually, this is what you do in the present all the time. This is what I do in the present, yeah. All the time? Mm. Yeah. yeah. So what do we want to change? Well, I want to bring my family. I want to bring my, my partner and my son over, over here. Over here? Yeah. And then maybe we can all leave them behind. That sounds great. You want to go and get them? Yeah. Come, let's go. Grab your bag. To help him embrace his new future, Benjamin encourages everyone to walk away, watching as they leave the past behind. How do you feel now? You got this far away and you brought them with you. I can't stop smiling. Yeah, it's strange, <laughs> I don't know what it's about. But I just, I don't know. I just feel really, I feel really light. So, it's great. It's, no, it is. No, that was really, I just can't stop smiling. <laughs> Sorry, so that's just. <laughs> that's great. I'll go back and take care of the mess. And you guys go off and have a nice time together. Okay, cool. All right. All right see you later. <laughs> see you later. Jason was very brave and very honest and very open about how he actually competes with his son and compares himself to him. Now, that is something I want to work on with him more. He needs to understand his feelings, and when he does, he can then cope with whatever situation he's in. Having faced the truth about his relationship with his son, Ethan, Benjamin's organised an activity weekend away for the two of them. Jason's never done anything like this before, and Benjamin hopes it'll help him view fatherhood in a new light. I have to say, it's been really good spending some time with Ethan. And I really enjoyed helping each other out on the assault course and kind of just being there really with each other. I thought that was really great. And, um, you know, in the past, it was easier to kind of switch off in, in, in certain respects. And this whole process has kind of made me switch on, kind of, to being a, you know, to being a father. If I've had the confidence to kind of come out and do something completely outside of my comfort zone and survived it really well and have really enjoyed it, I can imagine that my need to hide behind my spending is, will, will have diminished. So um, I think that this is going to have a really positive outcome on my spending, I have to say. With Jason riding high, Jay's brought him to trendy Soho in London for her final session. Jason used to work as a hairdresser here, earning more than three times his current salary. And Jay thinks he's missing a crucial opportunity. 
One of the things I wanted to talk to you about was sort of increased earning potential as well, because obviously, you know, you want to be a film director, you're going into an area which is pretty high risk, and the long-term goal is to move back to London. Yeah. So do you think it's something you'd be willing to think about, sort of d increasing your earning potential? Yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. If I say hairdressing, how is that going to make you feel? I haven't cut hair for years. Yeah. Look over there. Jason's not been in a salon for seven years. But if he can rise to the challenge, Jay's certain it'll be the answer to financing his future ambitions. So if I take you in there and get you to relive your hairdressing days, how is that going to make you feel? What does that bring up? Uh, well, straight I feel I feel quite anxious, right. I have okay. to say. I mean, I'm nervous, man. And I don't want to increase your stress levels, <laughs> but all I'm saying is that you do have skills which you are incredibly good with that you're not utilising. She's arranged for him to try his hand at styling a willing volunteer. Now he's got to prove he can still cut it when it counts. All right, I tell you what, I'll just sit down here out the way. Right, do you have anything in mind, really, with your hair? I'd like something different, because I've had quite similar sort of hair for a while now. Um, but just as long as it suits my face, I'm quite open. OK. And how much time do you spend on your hair? Not much. <laughs> OK, so you want something pretty... Yeah. Pretty you know, easy, okay. pretty versatile. So if you're going out, you can do something with it. Definitely, but something yeah. that looks good when you're... Yeah. So you want everything? Yeah. <laughs> Jason, you all right? I'm it's, nervous, I'm really yeah, nervous. Yeah, I know, but do you I'm know really what's nervous. interesting sitting watching you is that I can't see those nerves. Seriously. <laughs> I think the minute I said what he was going to be doing today, his first instinct was panic. He could, you could see the anxiety rising up in him. His hand movements got much more agitated. But once in, ha-ha, all that excitement has come back, and he seems to be really, really enjoying himself. You all right? Mission accomplished. Yeah, no, I feel, yeah, no, I feel a bit nervous. But, Are yeah, you no, happy, Jason? Yeah, really is, that, is, that, is that looking all right for you, Yeah, yeah? it really is. Uh... If I'd have said to you before you came in here, hairdressing, something you'd think about, you'd have said no. Now you've been back in here today, is it something you consider? Um, yeah, I, I might look at, like, going on refresher courses, because I have really enjoyed yeah. it. See, I'm not too worried about that, even though the course would be an outlay, because I think that the money you could earn from doing this would offset against that. So, you know, you can choose how many times a week, all of that. It's just that the earning potential from doing this, because you're good at it, is brings in a much, much bigger reward. Four weeks ago, Jason Cooper was heading for financial meltdown. His out-of-this-world shopping binges had left him with a crippling debt of £35,000 and his family in financial hot water. Since then, lifestyle expert Jay Hunt has shown him how to increase his income and unleash his inner confidence. With me, what I think would really help you with your budget is if you could think, I haven't got to go out and spend a huge amount of money on something that's going to give me the confidence for that event. Meanwhile, psychological coach Benjamin Fry has unearthed the emotional roots of his addiction. By facing up to the competition he felt as a child, Jason's confronted his insecurities. You're revealing yourself to the world in yeah. a way that you spent so much time and energy trying to cover up. He's finally beginning to accept his responsibility as a father and family man. Hey! Hey! But Benjamin has one final challenge for him. It will bring together all the hard work of the past month and test if he has truly overcome his financial demons. I have here £3,000. In fact, I'm going to take this money. I'm going to stick it in your pocket there. Now, I have in my other pocket a map, which you must now walk out of that door and follow this path, past most of your favourite shops. The last time Jason had £3,000, he blew it in a weekend. Can he now prove to himself he is worthy of financial success? How do you feel? Yeah, I just feel really uncomfortable. Worried about what might happen to the money? Yeah. OK. Yeah. Because you feel like you'll spend it? Yeah. And yet you don't want to spend it? I don't want to spend it, no. 
So these are the two sides of you. You want to be a winner, but you want to be a loser. Yeah. You want to get rid of wealth, but you also want to hang on to it. Yeah. Which yeah. is why you're so stuck. Yeah. But if I had the choice now, I would choose to be a winner. So what do you want to do with the money? Throw it away or hang on to it? Put it in the bank. <laughs> wow. Have you ever felt like that before? Um, no. No. Wow. You up for it? Yeah. I'm excited for it. Yeah, so Good am luck. I. Jason steps out into a brave new world. His first stop is Covent Garden. Only four weeks ago, he would have happily spent hundreds in this shop without batting an eyelid. They're fantastic. These are just so nice. I am a little bit tempted, I have to say. He resists the gold lame trousers, but next up is the ultimate test. It's Jason's favorite label. These are the ones that I wanted. £575. <laughs> but they're just fantastic. This is a nightmare, coming out shopping with three grand in my pocket and not being able to spend a measly 160 of it on a nice little jumper. That's just mean. The new stronger will Jason emerges empty-handed. Even a Hammer Horror box set can't tempt him. If I had this money two weeks ago, I would, no, about a month ago, what I would have done is I would have come into the shop and just picked that up and bought it without thinking about it. And I would have let Jane pick up the pieces. An hour and a half later, a triumphant Jason arrives at his final destination. So was it a walk of shame or was it a walk of pride? It was, it was a walk of a winner. Yeah, fantastic. <laughs> there you go. And I, I think you mean that. No, you I mean do. that from the heart this no, time. No, I do. I mean, the, the money wasn't burning a hole in my pocket by the end of it. That's an amazing so change for you. It's great. How do you feel? I feel lighter. I feel less burdened. Fantastic. I brought you here to finish your psychological journey outside a set of double doors at Weller Professional. Now, should you choose to walk through those doors, inside, someone is waiting for you, who will sign you up to their Heroes Masterclass at a discount, a substantial discount, to what they normally offer. OK. Yeah? OK. If you don't want to walk through those doors and you want to go back into your old life, Soho, Covent Garden, shopping, spending, that's also up to you. Do you walk through those doors to an investment in your new future, or do you go back where you came from? It takes a moment's thought, and the new financially aware Jason makes his decision. One of my main aims for Jason was really to reverse for him the legacy of what I saw as a very central memory that he brought to me. Now I think he understands that as an adult, he doesn't have to be vulnerable and weak. He can be strong, and he can live with the success that he deserves. It's nearly two months since Jason Cooper embarked on his financial makeover. Now, Benjamin and Jay have gone back to Bristol to see if he's still on target. Whoa. Hello. So you're okay? You. Yeah. Nice you okay? No, look at this, all different. A big clear out of all of those boxes over there. What's yeah, the, the, the comics have gone there and the, the comics that I've kept yeah. are underneath there. With my films, I've kind of hidden the choice ones in the corner. Yeah. Um, but most of them are kind of in my little Good. computer cubby hole. I mean, this whole process has been quite a clear out. Physically with moving stuff around mm -hmm. and kind of emotionally as well, it feels as if some baggage has definitely been dealt with. 
Do you think you've separated out a bit of the past and the present then? I think definitely, yeah, That's I have good. to say. That is, I mean, with regards to that, the process has been really, really, really beneficial. I have to say, it's been fantastic. So you haven't had a clothes binge, haven't had a comic binge, nothing like that? No, I've had no big spend outs at all. Wow. The only the only expenditure has been a couple of books for my uni course. That's fair enough. And a couple of DVDs for my uni course. Fair enough. Um, and, and that is it. I'm noticing the grey sweater pared down jeans. How are you feeling in that now? I really like, this is my favourite top. Is it? Yeah, it really is. It feels really comfortable and um, people comment in a really positive oh. way uh, about how I am dressed when I wear it. I think it's been really worthwhile for you doing because I think you're about to enter this sort of high risk job market. You, the hairdressing skills will see you through and I mm. think you feel much more in control of mm. everything than you ever did before. So, fundamentally, at the end of this, if I had to ask you, and I know you love this bit, <laughs> which feels more like you at the moment, the notion of being a loser or the winner? OK, the, I would, the, no hesitation. Yeah. So, I'm definitely a winner. I think so. Definitely. I see a winner. Yeah. How about you? <laughs> definitely this a winner. Is a, this is a very positive, upbeat, happy, progressing yeah, big person. difference. Huge. Jason, the winner. Well done, mate. It's not bad, is it? Good work, Jason. Good luck.